All right, so welcome to our uh, capstone presentation by Team Six, Henry, Denny, Leondi, and Robert. Our product is Nightlight, an infant monitor. So raising a baby is hard, but this is not speaking from experience because here at Team Six, we're all single. But what we do know is that some families will spend about $12,000 on newborn related expenses and get roughly four and three quarters hours of sleep per night for the first year. And on top of that, try juggling work, pets, family, hobbies, and much more. So naturally, a solution is needed to help with these issues. Introducing Nightlight. Um, Nightlight is a baby monitor that has many features. And this includes motion detection with its infrared video stream that operates in night and day, sound classification with the audio stream capable of filtering and recording audio to to determine and differentiate your baby's cries from, let's say, like a dog. Instant notifications through email for any suspicious activities from the baby side, like the baby falling. And this is detected with an IMU that's strapped to the baby and that updates whenever your baby is standing upright or laying down or falling, and it'll send an email. We also have an intuitive GUI with encrypted login system and an array of commands, including playing a lullaby and downloading some recordings. We also have some voice recognition. So when you're um, taking a look at some, uh, some things with your baby, you can have hands-free Siri-like commands. So all of these are integrated into a device with real-time and secure performance. And those hardware are listed are required for our application. And for our software, we use Python 3. And like PyAudio for audio, the OpenCV for our video, like both are for filtering the audio and thickener for our user interface and my SQL for the database and TCPM and QTT to communicate with server and client and TensorFlow uh, to uh, filter out uh, bad data and AWS for our server stack. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So here we have our system diagram. You can see over here we have the baby side that has all the functions from the camera, the uh, IMU that a baby would have. Um, we also have the client side that has the GUI and all of the video clients to be able to interface the information presented from the baby side. And this is all sent through central processing, which Robert will explain. Yes, so for our central processing, uh, we are running to AWS EC2 servers. Um, one of them is the relay server. Uh, its job is to redirect data from the baby side to the client side. So those are the video data, audio data, and the chat. And we have another data server, which connects to our Amazon RDS for our database. Um, this one in, uh, stores user information. Um, we're also encrypting the password of the user, so it's very secure. Um, another one is connected to our S3. This one is for our cloud storage. And for the multi-client audio, um, it's still the same as the midterm. Uh, it still supports multi-client, uh, multi -client, uh, so client can connect and disconnect without breaking the server. Um, it goes through the relay server with approximately two second delay. Um, it does noise detection, and on noise detection, it will send a notification via SMTP, and it will also send a noise classification along with it. And a new addition is now we're doing cloud recording, so if you miss what's happened, you can check the recordings. Um, more on the data server, um, it has access permission to our database and S3. Um, it processes database requests from clients, which are the create account, login, uh, update email, password, and notification. And it also does the checking if the if the account already exists, if the email already exists, and all of those. Um, it also processes S3 requests from clients, which are downloading recordings from the cloud storage. And it processes requests from the microphone, which is putting recordings to the cloud. Um, this is asynchronous, so multiple clients can request to the server at the same time. And for IMU, uh, we have three phases. One is the initial laydown phase, states as the left uh, picture. 
and the medium state is when baby is standing up, and the dangerous state is when baby is flip like a right picture. So it will send a notification to parents if the baby is on the flip state, the dangerous uh, state. It uses a SMTP uh, notification server service. So here's the multi-client video subsystem, and you can see that we have, like I said before, we have everything coming from the baby side. Our uh, our Pi is sending data frames to the AWS server, which is running three threads. The first one is the RPI CAM thread, which is continuously capturing data from the RPI wirelessly. Next, we have a TCP connection thread, which senses for client connections coming from, multi, from multiple clients. And then um, we're able to send the data with the third thread, and um, it'll do all of those simultaneously. On the client side, we have uh, multiple clients. And so this can facilitate uh, true multi-client because with this, we're able to do a hop on, hop off, so we can have multiple users uh, going off without breaking the entire system. Um, any internet connection would allow it. Uh, actually, Danny was at a cafe the other day, and he was in Taiwan to be able to connect for uh, to my baby monitor here at California. Um, we have infinite client support that I'll show, and then 10 frames per second is about the frame rate and two second delay from real time. So here's a very early prototype. Some of you have seen it before, but for those who haven't, um, here we, I have uh, multiple video clients popping up on my laptop to simulate the multiple clients. And then as soon as one exits, okay. And you can see that the motion status is being displayed to every single one of them. Okay. And then as soon as one of them hop, hops off, we get a notification on the server that the client has been dropped and the rest are still operating. So that's just the, uh, Look. So we also have image processing performed on the camera. And with this, we have um, experienced uh, improvement with the IR uh, camera. And so without the IR camera, uh, we, we had a 46% success rate with the motion detection. And you can see here that in the dark, it practically doesn't work. But with the IR uh, camera, we eliminate all the false positives that we've uh, gotten from the previous data set and decrease false negatives by 38%. Okay, now we move to the... You're muted. Okay, okay now uh, we move to the user interface. Uh, we will have three interfaces, which are login system, GUI, and speech recognition. Uh, login system is the security system that we made. Uh, this system is connected to our database, so as long as we have uh, internet, you can still access it, our program. And then the GUI is the program for making the user easier to interact with our program. And also the speech recognition, uh, this is the speech command that will be in the baby side. So let's say we are not in the position like uh, to open the GUI from phone or computer. So we can just like, uh, call like high night light and then uh, after that just do the operation like play first lullaby or play second lullaby yeah next yeah and then this speech recognition is mainly using speech recognition module so this module has some function to record speech from the microphone and then translate it into the text and then Later on, there is a find substring function to find an action word. So if the action word is found, it will send a comment to our database using the MQTT. This is the accuracy of our speech recognition. Uh, the way I found it, the, this accuracy is using that one, the self text equal the self dot r dot recognize Google audio comma show all equal true. So basically, when we print this uh, self text, it's gonna uh, show it us this uh, for these four possible words, and then with this confidence level, uh, as we uh, observe, uh, the hardest, the unusual uh, word that we use, the confidence level is lower than the usual word that we use, like play for song or play second song. 
Uh, now uh, it's for our over. notification system. Um, how it works is that every account registered and account email update or notification setting turned off or on, um, the GUI will notify, will send an alert to our notification system, which is in the baby side. Then on alert, it will make a request to our database server for an updated email list and store it on the notification system code. So this way we save um, querying the database every time we have to send notification. And this will always be up to date only when I use uh, what, what I mentioned about. Uh, yeah, now we move to the GUI. So this GUI mostly using the Tinker uh, module, MQTT, OS, and JSON. Uh, Tinker itself will create the GUI display as you can see in the right side. And then OS is mostly to destroy a pop-up window like in the right side window. And then it's also like uh, close the program. And the, the, the important thing is like uh, make a path so uh, the user doesn't need to open a file path, something like that. So we directly set it up the paths so uh, make it the user easier to process the program. And then there are eight buttons that embed in the GUI. We have four buttons that will pop, uh, four buttons if it's that, but it, if it's for that four buttons was, uh, are pressed, it's gonna pop out another window. And then another four, it's just change the condition. For example, like uh, play Lula by recordings and then changing login info and open chat window, it's uh, those button will pop out another window. Other than that, like watch the baby, listen to the audio, and then notification setting, it's gonna like change the condition of the button. And for chat box, we have a multiple user uh, client to connect or uh, disconnect using the uh, AWS servers and they use thread listening for client connection and use TCP as well. And it has a button on a GUI so you can press a button and open up the chat box. And for the background name data, so when you enter the GUI, it, does, it, it, it record your name, user login name already. So you don't have to type it. It will pull the data from the server to get your name info. So you don't have to type it in the chat box. And for deployability, a user menu has detailed four simple steps. For first, first they have to install a script. Um, install you run the environment client .yml. It will install all the library they need to run our application. And then they can run either Max OS or Windows bash script to start up our application. And we have two types of GUI interface. One is specific for Mac and one is for Windows because uh, at last we found that the Mac uh, doesn't show the Cayenne cop color like the top picture and the size will be different on the Mac GUI when we run a Windows GUI on Mac. So we made specific two GUI, one for Mac and the Mac will show the bottom GUI just similar to a Windows GUI. So we teamed up with Team 4, uh, Brew and Doodle, to do some testing and receive some feedback. Their main uh, issues, uh, there are five of them, were incompatibility between macOS and Windows, which we solved, as Denny said earlier, with separate GUIs and different bash and batch scripts. We also uh, reconfigured the aesthetics of the GUI, which felt too cramped, and uh, we simplified the GUI by putting uh, more useful buttons and embedding all the video frames onto the main window. So that's a very new update. And also there was a security risk that got exposed when uh, you accidentally exited early and then um, the login info would actually be displayed. So we encrypted that in our server database so that wouldn't happen. We also made a more intuitive speech recognition by saying, hey, Nightlight, kind of like the Siri. And um, in addition, we had increased interactiveness between clients by including by including a group chat. So um, all very good feedback, so thank you. Um, coming up, we have some sample videos from Brew and Doodle and, uh, okay. 
So this is them testing each one of our features, such as the first one, which is registering and logging in. And so you can see they're inputting their information and registering. And then they log into account with their information and they do it wrong. So then they go back and then redo it and they get back in. So that's logging in. Um, next up we have, excuse me, watching the video. So this is another feature that we'll also demonstrate, but this is the group doing it. And so as you can see that there is a about 10 uh, frames per second rate and they can click on and off this button which will then be replaced by the logo when it's deactivated. And you can press that as many times as you want. We also have Listen In Lullaby. Go ahead and play Lullaby. So this is audio from the actual and then make sure to press this video. Finally, there's the group chat function where we have two members from the group, Prothush and Aaron, thank you guys so much. Um, they were chatting with each other and it's um, shown here. So Prathyush says hello, which pops up on Aaron's screen. Aaron's like, oh, hey, something comes back. And then, yeah, it's a nice, very fast dialogue happening between them. So yeah, thank you guys so much for your wonderful feedback and trial testing. Next up. So for the timeline, um, in fall, we mostly worked on flushing all the features to its completion. So making um, the audio and the video classifiers, the IMU classifiers, then uh, we pieced it together towards the end for a single uh, client to be able to do end-to-end -end, uh, experience for the nightlight. So basically all of that for one user. And we also had a very simple GUI at the time. For winter, we also wanted to facilitate more multi-client and uh, we did this for a video and all of our features. And then we also improved on the deployment by making the, we tried Docker for a little bit, that didn't work out. So we went the alternate route with YML and batch scripts. And then finally we um, configured some compatib compatibility issues after we performed our feedback. So that's the timeline. Here's the work breakdown and it's kind of a mouthful to go over, but we'll be including it in the report and basically you can see it's all distributed evenly. And now we're ready for our demo. So um, if you'll allow me to prepare, I'll stop sharing my screen. Um, Robert, is the, yeah, the server are the servers up? Yeah, the servers. Is the IMU running? Yeah. Perfect. All good to go. Okay, so let me pull up script. So just for a little bit of context, if you can look at my video, um, I am here at the baby side. So I am here with the baby, which is stored in this crib. Um, don't mind the contraption, but the baby's in there. Currently it's in a dark room and yeah, we're just gonna set the situation like that. Denny and Robert and Leondi are uh, parental figures <laughs> or, uh, on San Uncle. So yeah, let's start out um, the demo. So Denny, um, so, okay. We're in a dark environment and all of a sudden the baby flips over. So I'm gonna flip the baby over and you'll see that shortly. Does it flip? Please do not try this at home. And the baby will start crying if let's say he or she falls. So you can hear that the baby is crying. So now let's assume that the baby is crying and Denny will receive a uh, email indicating that the baby has fallen or flipped. See so, yeah. Yeah. So zero. So I got away. an email like ten fifty one, which is right now, zero minutes ago. Yeah. And then I decide to open up the app. So I run the Mac shell script. and log into the, my account. And watch the baby. 
Oh, shoot. <laughs> it's not dark enough. So, yeah. You can see the night vision. So, yeah, so now yeah. the baby is in a night vision. Yeah. So, back where we were, um, the baby is still crying all of this time. And we're going to demonstrate the listening aspect from Danny's side right now. So Danny right now is in Taiwan. And I'm going to mute myself because I'm going to be playing the baby audio. And then, um, yeah, we'll see if Danny can hear it. OK, so now he's mute and I'll press listen. So we heard a baby sound in, in my computer. Yep. yep. So the baby. So the baby you, oh, okay, you can. Okay, you can. So I'm going through his audio too. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So next up, um, we're going to uh, play a lullaby. Let's say we'll send a lullaby to the baby side from Denny. So he's going to try that. I decide to play a lullaby and. Let's see if Henry shares, and he will share the screen. So right now, I'm going to share my screen and share my computer sound um, for, and I'm just waiting for the lullaby. So. <laughs> Right, so the lullaby is happening, and then um, he paused it from remote. And let's say that um, I walk into the room with the baby, and first thing I do is I turn on the lights. All right, so remember that that's important for the plot later. And uh, let's let's test out the speech recognition. So I'm gonna say uh, "Hi, night light," and then. Um, Play first song. All right, so my hands are free. Oh, and then let's say stop, stop song. And then it paused by itself. So as you can see, uh, the hands free should work. And that's it for my part. We're on to Robert, the next parental figure. Okay, so I will start by logging into my account. Then I will check the baby. Um, now we can see that it's in light mode because can we uh, turn, on, turn on the lights? And I can close it. Oh, wait. Yeah, I'm having problems running multiple apps at the same time. And we can also see the recordings over here. When we press this, we'll get two options. One is like download from cloud. Then we can see that um, there are recordings from March 11. So we can download those. And they will disappear from the cloud uh, list. Then to play those downloads, um, we can go to play recordings. And then we can choose which one we want. So. I can play this one. Yeah, yeah, it's record. Not sure. Can you guys hear it? Yeah. Okay. Then we can also delete it locally. So once we delete it locally, we can see it back on the cloud. Then the cloud um, will be deleted on its own uh, after seven days of its creation. So yeah, that's it. Nice. All right, so we're going to demonstrate making an entirely new account with Leondi, and he's going to take you guys through that. So here, uh, basically, like I run it to Python here, and then now let's say I don't have my user here. Oh, uh, my username and password doesn't match because I, don't, I haven't registered it yet. 
and then let's close it first and then go to the I, register. I barely can hear you. Can you speak up loud? Oh, yeah. So basically, like now we try to register our username, Randy, and then. This is I register because I haven't registered it yet, right? And then I register the same username with the same email. It should be failed because I already take the username. And then, for example, if I put the, the random username with the same email it should be good because it's only email so oh er email is already taken so we cannot use the same email as well so yeah and also there is a case that if we for example, this one, but we didn't, we, we don't fill in the email address on only the username and password. So we, uh, it's going to fail as well because we cannot fill, uh, we haven't filled the box and it happened with username and password as well. So right now let's log into the, our, Now I'm trying to change my login info. So I'm trying to, my current password is two digit, right? And then uh, let's say uh, I forgot my password and then I put three digit and then it's some random password. Wrong password, uh, wrong current password because it should be two digit and then I put it three digit, that's all. And then, yeah, I changed to three digit and then it should be success, okay? And then now I changing my email. Uh, let's say I put my previous password before I change it. And then like I changing my email, it failed because I used my previous password. So I changed the current path. I used my current password and then okay, it success changing my email. Yeah, and then as you can see now, I'm trying to uh, to open the chat window with others. Is the server running? Oh, there was a failure on server. Let me restart. Um, we're getting a bunch of failures on the server because we're only using free peer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if we paid, you know, pay to win. Yeah. So we restart the server and then we log in. And then yeah, and we have been testing a lot, so we're running out of memory. Yeah, yeah I changed my password. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. It's restarted. Okay, now I log in as a Lyondi, and then Danny join inside, and then I say hi. Yeah, and then I just go out, and then I can still go inside. Yeah, like, so, guys. Yeah, and then I see Danny laugh the chat. And can we try to join the chat? Yeah, I think that's all for the open chat. And then for one last thing, it's the current notification. So we can on and off. So it should be the, uh, so for example, if the user don't want to get some notification, a bunch of notification, he can turn it off and then press quit. It should be when I run it, it should be safe as an off. It's safe in the database. Because you get, because last time I got like thirty six email like 
that way. Thank you, Roman. Yeah, that's the end of our demo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, definitely a very nice uh, uh, product. Um, I really liked all the different uh, different features you showed. Um, definitely very cool. Uh, Jeffrey, do you have anything to add here? Or? No, I just. I like the demo. It was good. It's pretty cool, and you know, hopefully, you can you can even enhance it further and eventually use it yourself. You know, <laughs> exactly. It's, it's past my time, so you we guys have to get a girlfriend first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my my kids are above that age, so you know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.